human being. You will live your life according to the lies of the natural realm. But if we say we are supernatural, how many know that everything has to be supernatural? That's why I like when Jesus said, you will say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. Because the mountain always represents mindset. Remember, Moses had to ascend the mountain to get to where God was. It wasn't a journey to get higher than everybody other than this. This one fact was to get him to meet God face to face with the same mind. And Paul wrote about it. He says, let this mind be in you, the same mind that Christ had. Okay, because Jesus came, and how many know he had to elevate his mountain or his mindset to a place that others were marveling at the power of God. Okay, how many know that everybody can do miracles? Yeah, yeah, there's a gift of miracles that Paul wrote about, and we operate in that in this church. But how many know that the greatest miracle you ever do on any given day is speak kingdom living. And live according to those dictates. You live according to kingdom living. Amen. Now, I, I had somebody write to me this, this week. That was a, it's an expat. You know, one of these guys that from Hilo, but they moved to the mainland. And they just so happened stumbled upon us on Spreaker. And they were listening to me and they says, wow, what private school you went? I said, private school? Oh, this is public school, bro. Hilo High, class of 2006. Anyway, <laughs> 83, bro, 83. Okay, I said it, yeah. I told them, this is public school. I, and they said, man, you don't sound like you came from a public school. I said, simple, because common sense will elevate you to a place of knowledge and wisdom that a lot of people don't have. You know, a lot of what we have is street knowledge. How many of you know street knowledge? You guys know, if you had to walk instead of ride on bike, you had street knowledge. Because you start memorizing the cracks in every street in Hilo. You start looking down alleyways. You start looking because your mother said you're not supposed to be there. But you're there anyway, looking over your shoulder. Who's going to? So street knowledge always makes you more aware. So let me tell you this. You know us people from here in the islands, and even if you're not, you're here in the islands now. Okay, so wake up. People here in the islands, the one thing we understand is common sense. Okay, you know why? Because we always look at these high makamaks. Yeah, you know, well, I believe. Shut up. <laughs> we look at the things that make sense. And this Bible was meant to make sense. If you make sense out of what I'm saying today, you are already, you're not under some person that graduated from Harvard, Yale, or Stanford, or one of these places. You are at the very base of your living, higher than them. You flip the kingdom over because your feet are firmly rooted. You're grounded. You're not some floating around Christian like, hallelujah, hallelujah, shut up already. Those kind of people, I like, like flick them on the head and walk away. That's what they say. They're so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. Because they're out there like, oh, praise you, Lord. When, how do you know that Jesus lived life for real with his feet on this ground at will? Upon his crucifixion, they elevated him off the ground, which is symbolic because it makes sense. The other two thieves that we have interpreted. Uh, we understand it to be Satan on one cross, Adam on the other, Jesus off the ground. Everybody off the ground. So now the blood is the only thing dripping on the ground to redeem all of mankind. Because all of us are created from the dust of the earth. Jesus' blood dripping on, the, on that very dirt redeemed the whole earth. Amen. Some of you are stunned by that. Public school, bro. Public school. I went public school. You know what everybody asked me? Oh, you coach St. Joe. What year you graduate from St. Joe? No. No. This is Hilo High Vikings. Yeah, how many Vikings in here? Come on. Yeah, the rest of you outweighed. All right. <laughs> so we're not smarter. We're just more well-informed. 
Okay, why? Street knowledge. Street knowledge because we walk on the streets. We analyze everything on the streets. You can reach anybody for Christ anytime you want. Just know that. It's, if you start getting cerebral and start thinking, ah, I don't know what to say, that's already you wrong already. He's stuck in the head. You're mounting all boss up. Okay. Hallelujah. Read that. Eh? Your first, first opening statement here. Read it together. It says, if you can see. Yeah. If you believe in the finished works of Christ, you will cease from doing things to try and get God to do what he has already done. Okay, push that all the way to the top so everybody can read that again. Okay? Now, the key is if you believe. All right? And Jesus said it a lot. If you believe. All right? Paul writes about it. It says, if you believe in the finished works of Christ. Now, how many of you believe in the finished works of Christ? Okay? Some hands will go up. Some of you are like, well, can I explain that to me? Well, Jesus parting shot to the entire universe, so to speak, on the cross was, it is finished. If you believe in the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, then you have to believe his last three words were, it is finished. And what did he mean by finished? He meant that the whole, the whole law of sin and death, the old covenant, the old testament was fulfilled in this one act. His last earthly breath, he said, it is finished. His life work was finished, but now when something is finished, something has to begin. I mean, you know that when Jesus said it is finished, he expected everyone to now pick up the ball and start running. But what happened was they went, and these lolos went back to what they knew to do. Fishing. Uh, tax collecting. They say Luke was a physician. I don't know what he was analyzing. Probably his own head at that point. It went from physician to psychiatrist. Like, I don't understand everything. And, you know, when we talk about stones, rocks, tablets, we're talking about the law. Now, two instances of the law, the stone being rolled away, was Jesus moving the stone, right, through other people. He's telling them. Now, remember when Lazarus was in the tomb? They thought he was dead, but he actually was alive. Jesus tells them, roll the stone, move the stone. He's telling them, this is symbolic for what you're going to do later. You're going to roll this law out of your life and let life come back out. All right. So when Jesus is now in the tomb, how I many know that now he's about to be resurrected, the stone is rolled out of the way now. How I many know that symbolically that meant that it's finished now? God has now rolled the stone. And you got to rely on what happened when they witnessed Jesus telling them to move the stone out of the way. So the law of sin and death is finished. Everybody say it is finished. It's finished. So if you believe in the finished works of Christ, maybe you never knew to believe in the finished works of Christ till you got here this morning or you're listening in live or wherever we are today. The finished works of Christ, you will cease from doing things to try and get God to do what he has already done. Why? Because God is taking a nap and so is Jesus. Some people say, well, if he's taking a nap, then he's not paying attention to us. Um, kind of. Kind of. Because he left us to do it. That's why people are still looking at the clouds, waiting for Jesus to reappear. Why? How many of you ever, as a kid, tried to stare at the sun as long as you could? What happened with that? Some of you are paying that effect today. You're walking around. I don't care. I don't can read, but I don't can see. Okay. Did that work out well for you? No. But some people still are out there looking. I remember I was seventh grade, and they said we was going to have an eclipse at noon, and we are like, oh, wow. He looked intermediate. We'll eat lunch real fast. Come back out. We're going to have the eclipse. And we're all staring at the sun. And they were t just telling us a couple minutes ago, right before we went out, they said, take a pinhole piece of paper and then look through it carefully. No, us, straight Lanakila. And we're all looking at each other. Even if we get eclipsed, we don't can see them now. But some people believe that, you know, if they stare long enough, Jesus is going to appear. Amen. Uh, I was a Catholic a long time, and I believe in a lot of things. Uh, yeah, and, you know, Mary, the mother of God, there's a lot of appearances of her. 
And sometimes I think to myself, these guys are staring at the sun too long. They started to see everything. For me, I'm a realist. Amen. I like real things. Do you? Yeah. How many of you like when real money appears in your hand? Yeah. How many of you ever got paid a nice check and you're like, yes, yes. And you get to the bank two minutes too late. They just lock the door. The money is still not your reality. The check is your reality, but the money is not your reality. Here's your reality of the cross is that Jesus, it is finished. He left you to do the work. He left you to do it, but not works. You work the gospel. You work the kingdom that was left to you. It's your kingdom now. You do with it what you're supposed to do. All right? So if you believe, you'll cease from doing things to try and get God to do what he's already done. Some people are still in churches all over the world just today, just today, begging for God to visit them. Amen. How many of you have been in a church like that? God, you get some guy or some worship leader, God, God visit us today. We pray uh, that our worship is pleasing to you enough that you will come and visit and stay a while. I get all itchy. How can you say you're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and still begging for God to show up when he's waiting for you to realize that you already showed up in heavenly places? That's what you call all oh, boss. Huh? <laughs> People all over the world, even this week, maybe even today, in circles, God, come and give us your presence. And you know, God, if I was God being the realist I am, I'd be like, you guys in my presence. And you're waiting for my presence. You're waiting for my presence, but you're in my presence. Something wrong with your presence. Do you guys get what I'm saying? Do you guys hear the error? Just go watch Christian TV. Go watch preachers on TV. Not to pick apart what they're saying, but just to realize what you know. Because you will know the truth. And the truth shall set you free or make you free. So all of you, here's another scripture. He whom the Son sets free is free. Is is a present state of being. It's not something you will be. It's not something you were. It's something you are. He whom the Son sets free is free. These are the people. Here's just for your clarification. Those that Jesus has set free is the ones that realize that they are free upon the finished work of Christ. When he said, it is finished, you realize, I got to step up to the plate now. It's up to me. Amen. Now, I've done this before. One time I was out golfing. I was a brand new Christian. I was out golfing, and it was, it was a beautiful day. Then all of a sudden, the cloud came over the sun. Right? Or well, under the sun, being local. Yeah. And it was black, and then it started to rain right over me. And the thought came to me. The thought was, would be, he always rain on me. And then I got quick, and then the Holy Ghost said, why don't you just speak to the cloud? I said, get out of here now. There was no eloquence of biblical Christianity. There was no Christianese. Get out of here now. And the thing just moved. I went over a guy I was playing with, and he would be. <laughs> so can you see that the things that sometimes you believe will happen to you? So you've got to believe that something different is happening to you, that you are a, not just a kingdom citizen, you are a ruler in the kingdom. Because a lot of preachers like to say, we're all kingdom citizens. Okay, but what that going to get me? I still got to go Starbucks and pay, not going to come free. All right, some of you live at Starbucks. Praise the Lord for you. Man. Well, if you have a status at Starbucks, let me bow down to you now. <laughs> let me share something with you. I will never have a status at Starbucks because I don't drink coffee. What are you going to drink over there? Some of you. Oh, you can get a chai latte with on. You know how I learned to make tea? Because the tea kettle would take too long as a kid. You run the hot water a long time. You put the cup and the tea bag inside. And you shake them fast. Then, you know, burn your mouth and you can still drink tea. 
jailhouse style. <laughs> I remember guys in, in jail, they would sneak coffee from the kitchen into their cell and squeeze the coffee from their socks and make coffee with hot water. I was like, these guys are ingenious. I hope no more toe jam. Uh, hopefully it was clean. That's uh, Folgers flavor crystals to the 10,000 power maybe. All right. Okay, read the scripture now. All right, verse 10. This is Hebrews, uh, obviously. It says Hebrews 4.10. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. So why are we trying to get God to work? It, when it says it right in the Bible, this is NIV, by the way. Let us, therefore, make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. So could it be that if you're trying to move God to do your work for you, that you are in disobedience? I don't know. You read the Bible. You interpret it how you want. What is it telling you? Right? Because what it's telling you is not going to tell me the same thing. But if we're learning together, then we can say, okay, so maybe I should stop trying to pray God to move on my behalf. Maybe the things I'm going through in my life are be a, a design that I have designed that I got to get through realizing who I am under kingdom dynamics, right? I got to take kingdom living and analyze the situation and say, what would God say? Because there's a lot of bracelets that have the WWJD. What would Jesus do? I got news for you. What would Jesus do? Take a nap and let you do your own thing, all right? If we're trying to force the hand, Jesus, while he was on earth, said, don't pray to me. Pray to the Father in my name. So you pray to the Father in my name. You know, when you pray, again, I'm going to just reiterate this. When you pray, all you're trying to do is get, okay, let me, this is, it may be confusing for some of you. But the realization is that the things that you have created in your life, God not going to help you out of it. You're going to have to find and migrate your way through it. Because God will create the way of escape, the Bible says. So, he, any situation that you have ever done in your life, God has a way of escape for you. He's not going to help you find the escape route. Okay? You're going to just have to migrate through the problem because God didn't create the problem. Right? We did. You know, most of your problems, I'm going to say probably 99.9% .9 of your problems in life have to do with other people. Because if you ever notice, if you're out in the middle of a field sitting down, there's no problems. If you're at the beach sitting down, that's why men like fishing, I think. If you're over there fishing and no more nobody, there's no problems. In fact, you catch more fish when you're by yourself. You know, yeah, and they're bigger. You know what? A story. Because nobody there for verify. You play golf by yourself. You shot the best score of your life. Yeah. Think about it, right? If there's no people, there's no problems. So God has sent us among people. So if there's anything that God's guilty of, is putting you with problematic people. And usually, I'm going to say this again, 99.999% of the problem is not the people, it's you. You are the common denominator in all of it. Every time a relationship goes bad, you was there. <laughs> what? No, it's not me, it's them. I can tell you right now. But, 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 but the group of people we change. But you were still there and had a problem still yet. Oh. Get into a group of people and don't say nothing. They're going to think you're crazy. Get in a group of people and say everything. They're going to think you're crazy. So either way, when you get around people, you're the crazy one. You ever notice when Jesus is around people? Every, every so often, he would migrate off by himself to be alone. And they were, every time he went, they did the healer thing, they gossip. What are you doing? What are you, what are you better than us? Yeah, 
you, where do you live? You know that to be true. Whenever you walk away from a group of people, something's going to happen. Right? Why? Because people are always competitive. What are they competing with? Here's where your mindset got to be. Nobody can compete with me. Therefore, if they try and talk religion, I just walk away. I don't need to listen to it. There's no debate when you're right. Am I right? No debate then. <laughs> so number one here, labor to enter into his rest. Okay? So this is your only labor. The labor that you have is a mental labor where you got to realize that you are resting too. No matter what you're going through, no matter what's happening, you're resting. You got to go court, you're resting. You got to go jail, you're resting. Okay? You in traffic, you're resting. Amen. You got to go work with crazy people. You're the only one resting. There is no problem. You don't contribute to a problem. There is no problem. All right. You just take it easy. Okay. An example of laboring to enter into his rest would be continuing to say what the word says in the face of contrary circumstances. Right. I have the mind of Christ. Right. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All right. Well, you know, Jesus is an ever-present help in your time of trouble. So you're constantly being strengthened because you are seated in him. So basically, when people look at you, they're not supposed to see you. They're supposed to see Christ, Christ-like behavior. All right. Don't waste time thinking about lack. Okay. Why? Because you just don't have it because you're not sowing toward it. So don't, don't knock God and don't blame people for not blessing you with money. If you're not sowing out money, you're not getting money. If you're not sowing out love, you're not getting love. If you're sowing out being a bitchy, grouchy, grumpy person, then guess what you're getting in return? No, uh, wiki waka waka. You're getting a lot of problems. Why? It's just because of who you are. All right? Keep your mouth shut. Usually people keep their mouth shut because they, they're scared of you. Yeah. To get into a group and just make a blank, plain face and don't say nothing. All of a sudden, you make people uncomfortable. They're like, what's wrong with her? What's wrong with him? Yeah. So don't waste time thinking about lack. Praise God for what you do have and the principle of multiplication will be Activate. How many need multiplication to be activated in your life? God is a God of multiplication and addition. He does not subtract or divide. Everything you do will be multiplied. And you know the enemy? He will see to it that your calamity is multiplied. And oh boy, he loves that, right? He loves to make trouble using you and other people. All right. Don't put your faith in your own efforts. Put your faith in Jesus. Why? Because Jesus already did it as your example, so you can do it. All right? When you find yourself responding in ways that don't line up with your belief in the finished works of Christ, most likely you've opened the door to unbelief. You guys know what is unbelief? It's the opposite of belief. Okay, well, I, some guys never catch that. Their mouth open. What is the opposite of unbelief? Belief. What is the opposite of belief? Unbelief. Wow. wow. So you can leave here today and say, guys, guess what I'm going to learn today? <laughs> Finished works of Christ, right? Everything was given to you. All right. You've opened the door to unbelief, which short circuits the transfer of the prosperity into your life. Okay? Prosperity, another word for prosperity is provision. Okay, God will give you a whole other set of viewpoints for everything. And he will also supply everything without you having to work toward it. The only access point, if you guys want to know one thing, if you want to access riches, it's called the key. And the key is the same key to whatever you're seeking is what you got to put in the door lock. Okay, if you need love, you got to get the key of love, unlock the door. Yeah, remember it says here in the Bible, Revela Revelation, that Jesus took back the keys of hell and death. I got news for you, okay? The word keys is plural. That means there's more than one key that locked up hell. So 
hell and death were locked up with a set of keys. How many know that in life you have sets of keys and you got to find the right key that fits the door you're trying to access? Uh, whatever you want to label your door, there's a key for it. Okay? You want love, you got to get the love key. You want money, you have to the money key. If you want health, you still need to find that health key and you got to unlock the door because how many know that there are a series of doors in your life that you got to go through, right? And on the other side of every door is the word obedience. So you got to have obedience in whatever that door is labeled. So you got to have self-control in all things. All right? If you don't like anger, stop being angry. I know, that was deep. That was probably the deepest thing all day. <laughs> if you don't like being mistreated... Stop mistreating. What? For real? You know, <laughs> I have listened to some very, very intellectual preachers in my time. Let me tell you something. I got nothing. Nothing. I'm a fairly intellectual guy. but well, I got nothing. You're looking at a C-minus student from Hilo High. Everybody say C minus because some of you, that was you, you was worse than me. I went to the registrar's office to pick up my, uh, my diploma about two years ago, I guess it was, because I needed it for something. I was like, oh my God, I don't have a diploma because I never pay for some books that I had borrowed indefinitely. <laughs> so they kept my diploma at Hilo High. When I went to the school... I went to the school and I asked the lady, I said, well, I'm here to look for my diploma. You know what she said? Okay, let me check. And she goes, oh, bra. She said, your diploma's in the safe. I go, okay, leave them there then. I can just get one copy. She said, no, 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 no. We're trying to get rid of it because we're trying to go paperless. I said, well, I need one paper diploma. So she said, okay. And she busted out this card, handwritten. Of all the bills that I had accumulated at Hilo High that I never pay. Oh my God. <laughs> I had a library book in there from 1979. Oh Lord. <laughs> the book was worth $30. And I told the lady, $30? I, I said, $30? What would that book be worth today? And she goes, you know what? She was looking. It was in pencil, so she just erased it. I was like, you know, you are right. She goes, what are they going to do with the book if you return them now? <laughs> she goes, ah, wipe out that one. Erase. Then she said, your basketball uniform, you never return them. I was like, sister, what are they going to do with that uniform now? Like, that was on size medium. And I said, hey, you know what? I said, she had an archive of yearbooks. I said, so I bust out 1986. I told her, 86, 87. I said, because the boy that used my uniform is proof in the picture that I returned my uniform. <laughs> and she said, you for real? I said, yeah, because I remember. I remember who the kid was because, you, know, you know, my brother, my brother's on a team. So she busted out the yearbook. We flip in through. I said, write down my uniform and go backward in 83 now. And look at that yearbook and we'll compare. It's the same uniform. <laughs> and she did. And she was like, okay, you're not lying. <laughs> so she erased that one too. And then she went down this laundry list of other things that I supposedly had borrowed or claimed or stolen. Textbooks. I was like, oh my God. Textbook. I had an architecture textbook from 1979-80 when I was ninth grade that I never returned. She go, ah, that one wipe out too. By the time she went through all of it, she said, your school fees. She said, do you know you had fees you never pay? I go, uh, which fee? Athletic fee. I said, I was an athlete. She go. I said, I'm not going to go watch myself play. She's like, okay, we wiped that one out too. She went down this whole list and we justified every action I took. Everything. Student association fees and all that. I said, you know, I was the audio-visual coordinator. So I was going to, okay, wipe out that one too. 
And by the time we got through it, it was a bunch of, she said, you know what? This card just got lost. <laughs> she said, here's your diploma. And I was like, ah. As soon as I opened this envelope, and I heard the angels go, ah. Light came out. It's the first time this thing saw the light of day since 1983. I was like, I graduated. I couldn't believe I graduated. But in there was talk, my last report card. I was like, oh, put that back. I was like, oh, I never seen so many flags in my whole life. I was like, you know my senior year, because I had enough credits to graduate the first semester of my senior year, I stopped going to class. Because technically, I met the requirement. You know what that means? I met the requirement. No matter what man said, I met the requirement. You know that the finished work? You have met the requirement. Don't let these other lolos tell you that you got to do these five steps to get to heaven. Or you got to do these eight things to impress God. Or you got to do these 12 things to get up in the morning and face reality. Bull crap. I said it, yes. Because that's all it's meant to do is keep you in the seats and keep you impressed. Because you're not going to leave a sermon that has 12 points at point three. And say, oh, I got to go. He'll be like, oh, I know can miss the other nine. Why do you think they have sermon series in church? This is the first in a five-part series, right? And then you came in three weeks later. This is the fourth part. You're like, oh, my God, now I got to buy all the CDs and get all the nine. And then now I got to come next week. Uh. You know, these guys, they're highly impressive at their tactics to keep you in church. Mm, they make you feel guilty about yourself. You know me? When you walk out the door, Anokia. Anokia. You, know, you guys remember a couple of years ago? I know Kia was a hot thing. I know Kia. And then get this lady. She used to be part of our church. She has a stick on the back of her Honda Pilot that says, God Kia. And I'm thinking to myself, these guys, they shouldn't care. They care too much. They're trying to impress somebody. God, is that God care going to help somebody come to the gospel? No, they're going to look at that as, I don't know what God key means. I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. All I know is that when people are nice, I'm impressed by that. So I try and be nice every day. Do you try and be nice? Yeah, so what do I get back? About 62% nice because I live Hilo. But I'm working on it. Yeah, that means that 62% of the time I'm probably nice because I still have a prison God face. My face tells you, don't tell me something stupid. Much like many of your faces. Most of your faces say, get the hell out of here before I cut your throat. <laughs> That's most of you. Until you smile, they go, okay. You had me worried there for a second. I thought you were going to rob me or something. Most of you have a robber face. Okay. Not rubber. Robber. Steal a robber. Okay. Okay, so stop thinking about lack. Okay. Don't put your faith in your own efforts. Put your faith in Jesus. When you find yourself responding in ways that don't line up with your belief in the finished works of Christ, most likely you've opened the door again to unbelief, which short circuits the transfer of the prosperity into your life. Until we start corresponding with the finished works of Christ by demonstrating our belief in a practical manner, we will not have or operate in the authority that he has given us. How many of you realize that you have authority? Yeah. What's your authority like? Remember something. Anytime you're behind the wheel of a car, okay? Now, you know in Hilo, we have these uh, pressure sensors in the street. When you roll up on it, it's supposed to, within a uh, reasonable amount of time, turn green. I say reasonable amount of time because reasonable is left to the interpretive realms of your mind. <laughs> This has happened to me before. I'd be sitting there like, okay, if I got to hum the Jeopardy theme song, that's too long. Okay. One, one night I was here, I was sitting at this thing, and the, the thing wouldn't change. I was like, 
reasonably, there's no traffic. And I turn, I just left. And right behind me, blue lights. Okay, this was several years back. So I pull over and the policeman said, you know you ran that red. I said, you know I was there for six minutes. And I told him, I sat there for a reasonable amount of time. It didn't change. That determined to me, with no traffic, I could proceed cautiously. I said, reasonably, right? I said, I waited a long time. I said, then, so there's obviously a malfunction. And I said, reasonably speaking, you were sitting there a long time watching me. I said, so, whatever you want to do, please do whatever you got to do. He said, nah, bro, the thing broken. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know because I required under the law to inform you that there was a lack of safety. You know what I'm thinking to myself? It smells like a ranch right now. And I don't have a shovel. Anyway, and he says, no, and you know what he said? Uh, his partner shot at me. He's like, I like your choice of words. <laughs> I said, you saw I was sitting there how long? He's like, yeah, my thing broken, I think. And he's like telling me, yeah, so where are you from? Hilo. He started getting into a conversation with me, and you know, I'm like, this is one lonely officer. Because <laughs> he started asking me, what do you do? I said, oh, I'm a pastor. Oh, okay, so you know can lie. <laughs> I said, well, I told him, everybody can lie, but if we choose to, right? And I said, I could have lied and said something else, right? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And then he started talking to me, and then he asked me for prayer. Because he heard, you know, because I told him I do healing and stuff here. Yeah. Oh, you know, I gave him bad back, you know, his bulletproof vest, they make us wear and all these the things. They're pulling me forward. They're pulling me forward. They said, it's straining my back, huh? And I was thinking, nah, it's not that you're Momona, right? So, yeah, I'm like, no, kind, yeah. I prayed for him. He felt better. And then he's like, okay, brother, hey, take it easy. Like, okay, brother, that was half an hour out of my life. Longer than the six minute traffic light. But it's fine, right? Everybody's like, oh, it had a happy ending. For who? <laughs> I hope for him, you know. God is good, right? So you just do what you know to do, right? Reasonable, right? What is reasonable to you might not be reasonable to somebody else. This is my thing. The thing was broken. The gospel traditionally, if taught traditionally, is broken. Because people are still broken. How many of you know Christians that are broken? And they don't know why. I'll tell you why. Because they don't know their identity. That's it. If you know your identity, then you know that you're self-responsible for everything that goes on in your life. Stop looking at other people as the problem. Then all of a sudden, you have a brighter day. Why? Because as soon as you start trying to judge and blame people, you like, ah, it's me. There you go. Go in the corner, make your own time out, think about things for a little while, start speaking a newer existence to your life, and then operate accordingly and reasonably. Amen. Reasonable. You know what is reasonable to me? Hamburgers for 99 cents. Cheeseburgers, right? Go to the airport. And the same cheeseburger is dollar menu is now four dollar menu. I told this Filipino girl at the Honolulu airport. I went to the Burger King because I had a delay uh, coming home. I was over there and said, "Oh, ho, sister!" <laughs> I was like, "This is worse than Hilo price." You go, "I know, brother. I know." Like, oh. I said, "Sister, you guys know the prices every place else, because this one not working for me." She go, ah, you pony, you pony. It was, I was on the last flight, so I'm you know, it's starting to close down. She go, ah, you know what, then? I give you my employee discount. <laughs> and it came down to less than Hilo price. I was like, you are right. God bless you. 
And I made the sign on the cross. And she put her hand together and she made the sign on the cross. She goes, I thank you, Father. Thank you. Okay, we'll go with that. And then she gave me a free drink. Hallelujah. Yeah. So here's news for you. Make the sign of the cross. People believe. I wasn't trying to get a discount. I was just making conversation, right? But that price was unreasonable. <sighs> Think of a chicken place right next to the Burger King. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? That chicken is the best chicken in the planet. And they price it accordingly. That price is, is out of this world. I'm like, oh. I went up to the Filipino boy. I got one tall one here. Yeah, work over there. I told him, hey, pare. I said, how come the chicken's so expensive? He go, ah, you know, the holy man, he make them like that. <laughs> Everybody got to be, is that the requirement? You got to be from Manila to work here? And he said, yeah, yeah. I thought, yeah, I'm Filipino. I know can pay that kind price. <laughs> he started laughing. I only like two chicken wings. He gave me two, and he says, just take them over there. Yeah, go, go. Just buy the drink. Just buy the Three dollars for a drink. I was like, oh. I told him, you know, in your backyard, you get chicken more cheap than this. He started laughing. He gave me mashed potato and gravy too. Ha! So you have to show yourself friendly so that you have friends. Now when I walk by, all the Filipinos, they're like, hey. You puck again. <laughs> and that one guy works security. Uh, he was standing in the line next to me. Well, you don't give me free kind. How come you give me free guy? Because he's friendly. You're not friendly. So evidently there's a word they call friendly that all of you have to learn. Everybody practice. Friendly. I'm just saying it worked for me. It worked for you. Amen. All right. Prosperity follows belief. Do you believe that though? In Mark 5, and Jesus is referred to as prosperity. He's also known as provision. Okay. Provider. Okay. So if we go down now, I have Mark 5. And we're going to spend six hours reading this. <laughs> well, you can read some of it, right? And there's this guy, he's so demonic, right? He's so demonic. Jesus got out of the boat, okay? A man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, otherwise known as graveyard or cemetery. This guy was living out there, all right? Okay. You know this? Our crazy people in our town, not as crazy as this guy, because they don't live in the graveyards. They live by the bandstand. In our church, we refer to these people as seismologists. Because no matter where you go, they lie down listening for earthquake. See you guys slow. Everybody's a seismologist that lived down, downtown. Okay. But we're working on them. Amen. We're praying for their prosperity. Okay. This man lived there. Uh, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. What do stones represent? The law. How many know this guy was a prisoner in his mind because of the law? How many know that there's a lot of religious people the same exact way? Right? They cut themselves with the law every day. Yeah? Stressing out because they're not doing good. How many know that people don't come to church anymore because they don't think they're good enough? Hallelujah. You know what? This is a good enough gospel. It's more than enough. Stop judging people and they'll stop cutting themselves with the very stones that we... You know that Jesus said, you without sin cast... Right. And you know what? Church has been doing that ever since then. They throw the stone, then they act like they never have them. Like, oh, was it me? Was it me? I, I don't judge. I don't judge, but yet they judge. Hold on. You know him. 
you know her. You know what I heard. That's judgment already. Why, why you? Gossip is another word for judgment. You got to stop, okay? You, you're not portraying yourself to be smarter than somebody if you're talking about somebody. Okay? You are literally ignorant when you gossip about other people or you challenge or judge other people. You are ignorant. Stop talking about other people. You know what I heard about you guys, eh? You know that even preachers are judgment filled. They stand in pulpits every day and they judge people. And I'm guilty of that. I just, the only thing I'm guilty of judging is stupid people. And I got news for you. You all agree. So we're not wrong. We're correct. I think. Maybe. No. Well, stupid is judgmental, right? Because I mean, you know, there's some people doing things contrary to the word. It makes them very stupid. Right? We don't do that, right? Because we're smart. Right? How many of you are smart? If you don't raise your hand, then I'm questioning you. Okay. We're all smart. So, again, he cut himself with stones. He would cry out. How I many know he's crying out for help and cutting himself with the law? Yeah. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Right? Why? Because he's looking at Jesus like Jesus is going to judge him. How I many you know there's a lot of Christians that have fallen away? Christians don't come to church because they think the church is going to judge them. I don't judge nobody. I love everybody, man. I love you. Some of you got to stay over there for me love you. Well, you, just, you just stay over there. I love you. Don't bring me all your opala. Just... I will fix anything you're willing to let go of. But if you're not willing to let go of it, don't come over here and try and dump it on my lawn and then come pick them up later. Amen. Amen. All right. In God's name, don't torture me. That's how a lot of people feel. They feel tortured by the church, right? For Jesus had said to him, come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? And what does he say? My name is Legion. He replied, for we are many. You know what the many is? Sin. Sins. He felt like he was so filled with sin, another name for Legion would be Sinner. I am sinner, for we are many. All right? And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. How many of you know that people want to stand their ground and they want to justify why they behave the way they do? If you love people, the Bible says love conquers all. So what is going to conquer that? Nothing can conquer love. Because love is the conqueror of all things. But you cannot love people and judge them at the same time. It doesn't work. It can't work. Right? And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. The area meaning not just the tombs, but out of the body. Out of his body. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs. Allow us to go into them. He gave them permission and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Now, I got news for you. I mean, you know that demon spirits will always find people who are agreeable with them. The word, the, the word pigs doesn't just represent animals. It represents bad behaving people. Just something for you to think about, okay? I mean, uh, <laughs> Pigs, remember now? Jesus talked about pigs a lot because the pig was a, 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 what, a split hoof animal. It was impure to eat a pig. So there's a, you got to look at the double meaning sometimes. What if there's a group of religious people called pigs? And the demons are asking permission to jump in them. And remember, the water always represents forgetfulness and forgiveness. So you know that, could it be that this was representative of something else? We want permission to go into these religious ones. Because the pig always represented religious law. You couldn't partake of a pig. You couldn't eat a pig. All right. Just something to think about. Could it be that bad behaving Christians are like pigs? They're impure. They're unclean. Because they don't realize that they have all of these things. All I know is the best tasting animal in the world is pigs. Second is chickens. 
third is cows. Everything else, leave off my plate. Some of you are like, wow, I like seafood. I like seafood over there. I don't eat too much seafood. And I told some of you, why? Why don't you like seafood? What is my reason, guys? Because I don't see what they eat. Therefore, I don't trust it. I don't eat cockroaches because I don't see them in the walls. Some of you are like, you crazy. Maybe, but now the next time you're eating one crab or one lobster, you're going to think about it. You will believe me. I command you. Now, <laughs> anyway. Some of you guys, you guys like your lobster, your crab, your fish. And all that. Here's my theory. Eating all of those things, it's not bad tasting to me. It's just too much work. How are you going to eat a pinch at a time off one reef fish? And think... I am a time-driven person. Give me a knife and a fork. Cha-cha-cha. Pa-pa-pa. Pa. If I got to constantly pick something out of my mouth, look at it. At least a chicken. If I cook them right, I can just slide it all right off the bone and they all stay back. Pork ribs, right off the bone. I don't know. I don't know. You guys like your fish, yeah. I remember one time I was in a restaurant in the mainland. Uh, how many of you guys like opaka paka? Yeah, red snapper, yeah. I was in a fine dining restaurant in Chicago, and somebody, oh, I'll have the red snapper, this lady. And you know how in Hawaii, you know there's trouble when they make this kind of sound like... <laughs> That's a telltale sign. There's a problem, man. I'm looking at this... Lady whose dress, her diamond was bigger than one lava rock. Like, and her earrings, her hair, and she's like, <laughs> <laughs> What does that mean to you in Hawaii? You know, bone in her neck. Her neck was boneless because the skin was like this, but she had one bone inside her neck. It was causing her to make this. <laughs> See, in Hawaii, you swallow rice. But in Chicago, no more rice. <laughs> this lady got problems. They called a rescue squad, everything, 911. <laughs> and you know what I told her? Why you wait? I said, you know what? In Hawaii, we do rice. You should just take a bunch of potatoes, smash it all up, and just start swallowing. And she kept doing it. She followed directions. I wish some of my church people would follow direction. But she did. And as the ambulance rolled up, she went, it's gone. It's gone. It's a miracle. She looked at me and said, that was a miracle. I thought I was going to die. I said, sister, I was going to die just listening to you. But they went. And the, the emergency people were like, what happened? You had a bone? So, okay, so what happened to the bone? So, well, this fine gentleman here said that they don't have rice uh, here, but in Hawaii they have rice. So we use potatoes and, stuff, and as well. And, it went down, and the, all of a sudden in fear, you need to go to emergency. We need to go get that out. We, uh, uh, Hawaii, what? We're going, if, let me just ask, how many of you ever swallow a fish bone in Hawaii with rice? You guys are dying. You better go emergency. You better go get that out. They said, it could puncture one of your lungs. Blah, blah, blah. Nah, the potato not going to digest, going straight through. <laughs> Just like rice, right? They say rice takes three days to digest. So some of you carrying rice from what, Thursday. <laughs> and you wonder why you know, can go out and you sweat in the toilet. <laughs> Look <laughs> I got to go doctor. Anyway, people ask me that, I would say on average, at least three to five times a week. Pastor, I'm having digestive problems. You got to lay off the starch, bro. Baga is backing up your plumbing. And they do, and then all of a sudden, it's a, wow, it's a miracle. Wow, we're a miracle working church. How's that, huh? Amen. Okay, so the pigs, yeah, they ran, those tending the pigs ran off. 
Could it be religious leaders tending the pigs? Could be. Ran off and reported this in the town, and the people went out to see. When they came to see Jesus, saw the man who had been possessed sitting there, dressed and in his right mind. What? Let me just share this with you. When you get the kingdom message and you finally take your seated place and realize your identity, you have a right mind. What? And they, who's the they? The religious establishment became afraid. You know that this message is not very popular in religious circles. Why? Because they can't control your behavior. You know why they can't control your behavior? Because you are under self-control. The ninth fruit of the Spirit is self-control. That means you're in your right mind. You can control yourself. You don't need some puppet show with somebody sticking their hand up your butt trying to operate everything you say and do. You're not a puppet for some low low out there. Amen. Am I making sense to you guys? Okay. And they were afraid. Oh, we got to watch out. Cross net. Oh, those people think different. Because we get special education over here. Oh. <laughs> Amen. All right. All right. Okay. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. Uh, I'm surprised nobody's asked us to leave Hilo. We unravel all the things that they say. But you know what's good? There's a lot of pastors in this town starting to listen to my stuff. And they're starting to tweak their message a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Because they don't want to see their bottom line numbers go down. So they kind of, you know, I don't own any of you. Freely you came, freely you can leave. Some of you have been praying for you to leave a long time. But you don't go, so <laughs> welcome home, stay home, you know. Yeah, you're just going to be a, no. I love all you guys. You guys are good. We already got rid of the bad ones. Nah, you know, people, if they don't believe what is being taught in a certain, certain way, in the way they believe, then they're going to go. And, and in Peter, it says, in, you know, in the New Testament, it says that in the end time, people will heap unto themselves people like, who will scratch their ears. You know what I mean? They get itchy ears. So they want to be taught from this pulpit what they want to hear, not what they need to hear. I ain't scratching nothing. Amen. You itchy on your own. Yeah. If they, here's the thing, uh, this makes me oogie sometimes, you know, and little kids go, kids are itching my back, and you scratch because they're small. Yeah, even though they get long arms, they can reach. No, you help them out. It's when an adult who's Momona kind of like, Pastor, do me a favor, just scratch right over here. Like, uh, what? You're sweaty. That's why you itchy, you sweaty. And they go, no, no, come on, Pastor. I'm like, Ugh. all the hand sanitizer in Walmart not going to help me on this one. And they go, no, 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 over there, over there. Yeah, right there. What kind of sound just came out of you? And they did, thank you, and I'm over there. I got to cut my nails. <laughs> People do that all the time. Because I'm... You know, ministering, I touched it back. Oh, just scratch right there. I'm ministering. My ministry is not for scratchy and itchy. <laughs> You'd be shocked at what people, no, oh, people are trips, bro, all the way. Okay. So now, okay, that's all good, right? So the man went away, and people were amazed. And when, here's another one. When Jesus said, again, cross over by boat. Why is Jesus always in a boat? Because he got to show them how to get above all of these things, right? And, all right. A large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus, came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with Jesus, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. Now, how do you know that if you do the things you're supposed to do, you don't have to preach to anybody. They'll come running to you for ministry. I don't chase ministry, if you guys know. I don't chase appointments and invitations. They just come. 
obviously because of results. Over the past few days, I ministered to a lot of these Mary Monarch people from other places. They come flying in. I went down to Manono Marketplace, right? Uh, our realtor said, oh, can you pray, pray for my friend and her daughter? I went there. I started giving word of knowledge, word of wisdom, started praying for them. I was like, oh, the crowd. I was like, I came for two people. Get more than two people. <laughs> but that's okay because it's an endless supply of energy. Your body will get tired, but, you know, you should live for miracles. Amen. Yes, lay hands on yourself every day. Practice. That's what I did. Some people say, oh, how did you get started? Perform myself. I was the biggest project I ever met. Some of you guys are a huge project. You know it. All right. Please come and put your hands on her so that she'll be healed and live. So Jesus went in him and a large crowd came and pressed around him. That's a large crowd. A woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. Now, you guys know that usually the physicians or doctors were religious leaders. Hello, what are they going to minister to? All right, yeah, let's move it up. All right, 27, when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak or his garment because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. Now, at once, now let's slide that one up, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. Oh, you know that what you have is not who you are. It's what's wrapped around you. All right. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, who touched you? Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. How many know that you, man, faith will pursue? And, yeah. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. The suffering she was having was she was having a menstrual cycle that did not quit for 12 years. All right. The real suffering she was having was because she was deemed unclean, she couldn't come out because of religious law. She couldn't come out in public amongst people because she was unclean. For her to come in and be jostled by the crowd and have to reach under, well, you know, she could be stoned to death for that. So, how well, you know that, again, another example of people because of religion, what was her dilemma? That. She couldn't be amongst religious people because religious people like to have this elitist mentality where it's us four and no more. Only us. You guys cannot come because you're not good enough. You're not free enough. You have sinned. This is not that kind of church. I know all of you was boss up last night. And if you wasn't, you was thinking about it a long time. I wonder if I should go. No, I cannot go to church. Anyway. All right. Hallelujah. You guys see all of this? If you really want to understand all of this, people crying and wailing, what do you see here? What, do you, what is the thing? This is Jairus now, right? He was on his way to Jairus' house. The daughter, if you look here, verse right over here, 36, overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid. Just believe. He didn't let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house, Jesus saw commotion, people crying, wailing. How I many you know that that's what religious people do? Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Like, brah, relax. Okay? Relax. He went in and said to them, why is all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead but asleep. But they, they went from crying and wailing to laughing. Okay, how do you do that unless you're schizophrenic? You know, a lot of religious people are pretty much mentally ill. If you're religious, you may have mental illness. Why? Because you will go from God is good to why God? God is going to help you. Oh, God is not going to help you. The devil is cursing you. How, how can you sway so far to the left and right? You can't do it, right? After you put them all out, how many know that Jesus had to put all the religious people? Get out. He took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said, Talitha Kaun, 
which means little girl, I say to you, get up immediately. The girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12. At this, they were completely astonished. Wait a minute. Who was completely astonished? Who did he take in the room with him? Peter, James, John, the mother and the father and him. And the girl, seven. I mean, seven is the number of completion anyway. They were completely astonished. Who would be more astonished? If I was the dead girl, I would be astonished. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I once was lost and now I'm found. Hallelujah. Yeah, think about it. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and they told them and told them to give her something to eat. Because she was being fed a whole lot of religion and law. All right? Because if you're 12 years old and you die as a girl, I mean, no, that means God has cursed you. And that's why you died. No. In the case of Jairus' belief took control of prosperity. Jesus was headed in one direction and Jairus' belief stopped him and caused him to start following Jairus. The woman with the issue of blood also touched Jesus' prosperity of healing with her belief in him. And it appears that Jesus allowed his ministry to be controlled by, read that, whoever would believe. Oh, you know that Jesus' ministry is yours. If you believe, you can do everything Jesus did and more. He said it, and more you'll do. Okay? Number five, Jesus was not just referring to a physical touch when he said, who touched me, in reference to the woman with the issue of blood. He was referring to her faith, which touched his prosperity. When belief touches prosperity, it get, gets rid of the need. Amen. The devil will always send a word that is designed to get you to doubt that belief and prosperity have made contact. That's what he wants you to do. How many know that you are prosperity? Because where do you live? In Christ Jesus, whose name is prosperity. So we know that your faith in Jesus has already made you prosperous. So there's nothing missing and broken from your life. It's just manifestation in the physical world. That's it. The moment something contradicts belief, deal with it. How do you deal with it? You get, if you have, uh, I don't know, somebody approached me the other day and said, Brother, what should I do? I get 23 traffic violations. Um, go to the court and tell them, I'm here. I said, where's all this traffic violation? Oh, every island. I got kicked off. All this is my last stop. Okay, it's a state court system. Just show up and tell them, okay, what I got to do to do this? I said, oh, but they're going to arrest me. I, I would arrest you too. I said, but just go deal with it, and then we can deal with it after. Okay, they did it. No problem. It's going. It's in process now. Okay, you guys know that we allow community service here. We allow community service for anybody. We'll let you do whatever, right? So we'll take care of it. Just go address the situation so it's not hanging over your head. All right. Your belief connects you to the prosperity of the spirit realm. You must be determined not to let anything turn you around in the wrong way. Hang on to what you believe no matter what it looks like. Under grace, we make demands on God based on his word and his full prosperity. Is God's prosperity full? Yes. You're a fool if you don't believe in God's prosperity. All right. Is that it? Are we done with all of this today? You done? I'm done. We're all done. Hello. So you all got a message. What are you going to do with them now? Thanks for the laughs, Pastor. What? I hope you got some kind of knowledge out of this. Amen. Uh, unless I'm only preaching to the Hilo High guys, they understand. I'm playing. All right, let's all stand. Amen. Hallelujah. See these babies. Oh, man, they're hungry. Yeah. They're hungry for the word. Yeah. All righty. Everybody good? All right. We always take an Ohana fund. This helps pay the bills of the house. So if you're a person inclined to have your bills in your house taken care of, then you help take care of the bills of our house. Amen. God will do whatever you do for him. Amen. That's just the way it goes. All right. So feel free. There's envelopes here if you need to. And then uh, if you need prayer this morning, we'll let you line up in a half moon around here. All right, we'll move some of these things out the way, and then we can minister to everybody who needs prosperity. Amen.
All right, if you need prayer, you can come up, stand around here. We'll pray over that offering. Don't worry, we'll take care of that. Amen. All right. No more line in a cup. We plenty of lines. Pick one. Okay. Just stand. All right. So you can curve this way. You have half moon going, yeah? All right. All right, whatever it is that you're believing for, God is going to meet your need this morning. You're already in the provider. You're already in provision and prosperity. All you got to do is realize that you have it. Amen. This is going to take some work on our behalf, yeah, because a different room. <laughs> All right, get room on this side too if you need to, yeah. All right. And as you stand here, just lift your hands to heaven and let God just filter down and through you everything he needs to. All right, because it all comes from your mindset. When I say filter down, I'm not talking about from heaven to you. I'm talking about from your mindset. We're going to change. All right, take a deep breath. Start breathing. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, get room. You guys can come around this way. No one. All right, close your eyes. Start breathing. Father, in Jesus' name, we apply the blood of Jesus liberally. Thank you, Lord, from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, in and out of their body, Lord. Every cell in their body, Lord, each and every one of us needs your touch. So, Lord, we thank you that we are seated in you. Thank you for touching us. Thank you. Wow. Hallelujah. And as this touch happens, Lord, every cell in our being just gets fired up for you. The blood of Jesus we apply. And we thank you, Lord, that every cell in our body is soaked, saturated, bought and paid for, redeemed, restored, recreated, Lord, in the image and likeness of Jesus himself, Lord. We take on Jesus' blood. And we thank you, Lord, that every organ in our body, we speak life to it now. Life, Lord. Skin is also an organ, Lord. We apply it to our skin, to every part of our being, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that for each and every one of us, the doctors have labeled certain things going on in our body. But, Lord, we believe in the recreative power of Jesus, restoration and redemption, Lord. Thank you for new lungs and hearts, kidneys, livers, Lord. New skin, Lord. New eyes. New ears. A sense of smell, taste, touch. Thank you, Lord, that every part of our humanity... We become filled with spirituality. Lord, we thank you that right now, Lord, each and every one of us has the privilege to be healed, but more so because we are holy of holies people, we have the right to be healed. So we thank you, Lord, for touching us. Wash us in that blood, Lord. All sin is forgiven, Lord. All we got to do is say, Lord, forgive, and we will forgive, and all of our sins are washed away, past, present, and future. We buy in, Lord. We are all in, in your gospel. We are your children, Lord. We love you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength and purpose. We thank you, Lord, for all these things, Lord. Magnify, magnify, magnify the power and the prosperity, Lord. Some of us haven't believed enough. Today we put away our doubt and unbelief, Lord, and we just thank you that every ailment is addressed. We call it into court in front of you and we ask you right now lord to pronounce judgment upon every evil spirit that is affecting our bodies and minds in jesus name lord wash us completely completely lord thank you lord for the blessing upon this young woman of god and we just thank you lord the lord says people are watching people are listening continue on in what you're doing and i will bless even your hands your hands will be able to heal even the most significant of things that people don't believe can be healed will be healed. You don't have to preach to anyone. You just have to exhibit the power. So, Lord, we do that for her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord. The Lord says, I am washing over you. I'm washing over you and through you. There are going to be more people showing up. Lord, we thank you for her very being in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, thank you for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this man of God, Lord. We just honor him, and we just thank you for his longevity. And the Lord says, you are prospering in your body because you believe in prosperity in your body based on church. 
The Lord says, I am blessing your entire being. I'm blessing you. The Lord says, you can choose whenever it is that you have grown weary. It's your choice. It's your life. It's your healing. I am continuing to prop you up and holding you in that place, that holding pattern. As long as you want, you can stay. So, Lord, we just bless his body and his mind. We thank you for every part of him, Lord. And we just thank you that you, the strength in his bones and in his mind and every part of his being, Lord. Right now, we pop open everything that's closed. We open up the channels of freedom in his body, Lord. His arteries and veins roll free, Lord. They flow so freely. There's no stress on any internal part of him, Lord. We just thank you for that, Lord. We give you praise. Give you praise for his life. Thank you, Lord, for blessing him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, Lord, in and out of his body. Thank you, Lord. A man of honor. And we give you praise, Lord, all the way down, right through him. Right through him, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for this young woman of God. Lord, bless her. The Lord says, don't worry about the past. Just embrace your present. Just keep in your present and you will be good. The Lord says, you are blessed and highly favored and you will continue to be. In Jesus' name, Lord, we bless her body. Bless her body. And the Lord says, don't ever look at hurts, past hurts. Things happen because they happen. Just migrate through them and you'll be fine. Lord, bless her future as she blesses her present. Lord, we thank you that all things work together for good because of her calling on her life. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this heart. Right now, I thank you, Father God, for setting this free. Lord, we just thank you for... Everything having its time, place, and purpose, Lord, we just thank you that right now, uh, the Lord says, I put you on a little pause there to understand that I am still God. I'm still God. And you believe in me, you love me, and you trust me. I'm asking you to take a higher level. I'm taking, asking you to take a deeper step in your walk. Just a little one. Just a little one. A little one. And you will see, know, and understand what I'm trying to do in the days coming. Lord, we bless her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, in and out of her body, Lord. Prosper her in every way, shape, form, and fashion, Lord. We give you praise, honor, and glory for what you're doing in her body and in her mind. And the Lord says, I believe for you to, to live a long life. Believe with me. Lord, we thank you for her body in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord says, I'm washing your mind right now. I am reorchestrating many of the thoughts the seed thoughts and the words that have come in to your mind. The Lord says this to say to you, don't believe everything you've heard from another realm. Don't believe it. Believe what you're hearing now. Just believe. Trust and receive. And I'm going to use you from this day forward. In Jesus' name. Thank you for this man of God. The Lord says, I'm going to prosper your heart. There's some healing issues that need to happen in your heart. So, Lord, right now we prosper him and we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Bless him, Lord, from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. I command every spirit at work to leave his body now in Jesus' name. Get out of him now. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. The Lord says you will have a new existence from this moment on. Just trust that I have touched your very life this morning in Jesus' name. Thank you for this young man of God, Lord. He is a product of a miracle, Lord. The doctors thought he would die, but he has lived. And the Lord says, you are an honor to me to come to my house every time you can and to serve me. Lord, we bless him. Bless him, Lord, every part of him. And your family won't know or understand why you love God so much. But it's because you had a meeting with God when you were in the hospital. Lord, we bless him now in Jesus' name. And bless the grandfather, Lord. We just thank you for the prosperity. And the grandfather is filtering down to the grandson. And everyone in, bet in between will be introduced to Jesus because of the actions of the grandfather. Let the spirit of a father flow freely over his house. The Lord says, there's some decisions you're going to make in the near future about your future. And I will keep you around for a long time based on that. So, Lord, we bless him now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for this young woman of God. The Lord says, you are doing fine. Just watch the words. Watch the words. Protect the seeds that have been sown into you. 
Just watch the words. Just smile more and you will know. In your line of work, there are many reasons to be frustrated and angry. Don't take them. Lord bless her now in Jesus' name. Lord. Thank you for this young one. Lord bless her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord. We just thank you in advance for all the good things, good things. The Lord says there's some that would pick on you and not like you, but the Lord says you are blessed, blessed, blessed in Jesus' name. And bless great grandma. Bless her, Lord, from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. The Lord says, do not fret, do not worry, don't be anxious for anything. I am orchestrating everything in my due time and season. Your family will be restored back to you, and all of them will be in good working order and blessed like you. So, Lord, we bless her spirit, man. Take control over every situation. Right now, strengthen the realms of the mind to trust, know, and believe in faith powerful ministry ahead in jesus name thank you lord for this woman of god we thank you for the crown of her head to the soles of her feet the lord says there's some things that you look around and you see that are frustrating to you but the lord says don't worry those things are fixing themselves i'm going to prosper you i'm going to prosper your children and i'm going to prosper your house more success is on the way it's already flowing in you're starting to see it know it and feel it that prosperity will one day just shake you. You will come upon a situation in the future and prosperity will show up. And you're going to see it. And you're going to see the words are going to be different than ever before. So Lord, we bless her. Bless her body and her mind in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for this woman of God. And the Lord says, you are a perfect example of free agency. You have always lived your life according to how you live your life. No one can tell you how to live. But the Lord says there's some principles that you have gleaned over the, over the years and over the seasons. And you have learned how to live life accordingly. And the Lord says this gospel that you're hearing now will open up a new realm of prosperity for you. I'm not looking for you to repeat the past. I'm not looking for you to fix the past. I'm just looking to, to you to have trust in me to embrace your present and your future. And all things will work well for you. I'm prospering your body. There was an issue in your body. And the Lord says, I'm taking away that issue which started it all. So, Lord, we heal her. Heal her body in Jesus' name. And the Lord says, you are free and free indeed. Continue on. I'm going to restore your joy to you when you are ready to receive it. And then you will look back and say, yep, I did it my way. And I'm going to do it my way. But with a new outlook through the gospel in Jesus' name. So, Lord, bless her and bless her back and her hips in Jesus' name. And her hands of healing. The Lord says, that healing that I put in you a long time ago and that compassion in your heart will continue to remain forever. You are meant and equipped to help hurting people. And that's what's going to happen from here on out in Jesus' name. Thank you for this woman of God, Lord. We thank you for the fires of God just burning through her. And the Lord says, don't worry about them so much. Just relax, relax, relax in Jesus' name. Thank you for this young man. Bless him, Lord, everything he touches. You are very intelligent and inquisitive. The Lord says those are good qualities to have. Once you realize your identity, no one can stop your personal ministry. Even at a young age, you can minister to a lot of people. Bless him, Lord. In Jesus' name. And bless the mom, Lord. We just thank you right now. Lord says there's some things going on in your back and your hips. So, Lord, we erase those things now in Jesus' name. Thank you for the stomach things to be disappeared now. Dissipate and remove yourself now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the power of a perfect mindset. The Lord says there's some things that you want to start doing again. And the Lord says I will bless those things. Just trust that you have the capabilities to do it. So, Lord, we bless her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord. And the Lord says, don't believe everything you've seen, known, and heard in the past. You come from a house that was very confusing at times. But the Lord says, I'm erasing all of the confusion. I'm addressing all of the things that have plagued you over the years. You just be who I am calling you to be and embrace the newfound ministry that you are enjoying right now. And all these things will melt away. Prosperity is going to visit you very soon. 
very soon. Lord, we just thank you for that prosperity. Lord says you've been sowing some seed for some secret things. I see those secret things, says the Lord. There's some things that you haven't written down, but I know in your heart and in your mind you're waiting to see. The Lord says, test me. Yeah, you can test me. I'll show myself strong on your behalf. So, Lord, we just thank you for this all working itself out. The Lord says, I'm turning up the heat on the inside of you. The furnace is beginning to burn. Many people won't understand, like, wow, this is a powerful woman of God. Where did she come from? The Lord says, you are a pastor of women. You just didn't know it all these years. So, Lord, we bless her, Lord. You've given a heart of compassion. Bless her, Lord, forever from this day forward, forever. In Jesus' name. Don't worry. They're coming. The Lord says, they're coming. The Lord heard you just say, what about them? The Lord says, don't worry. They're coming. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Some more down here. All right. You guys should have followed me over there. All right. Lift your hands. Thank you, Lord. And the Lord says, a child shall lead them. The Lord says, you have that spirit of a child on you. No matter what age you will be in your entire life, you still have childlike faith. You still believe in the goodness of people. You have had many opportunities to see and embrace and also to connect with people who are not so good. But the Lord says, I am blessing you because they're going to need your blessing. So the Lord says, just let them take what they need to. And I, will, I have an endless supply of anointing for you. Your words and your season are here. The Lord says, your season is here. This is your season of prosperity. Whatever you choose to embrace will stay forever. It won't leave you. It won't hurt you. Whatever you choose to embrace will stay. So embrace the things that are important to you. So Lord, we bless her now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And the Lord says, I see the vines, I see the barbed wire, I see all the things that you're trying to climb out of. And the Lord says, just stay put. Just hold fast. I am coming to rescue you. I'm coming to cut away all the things that are tangled around you like a web. I will free you. All you got to do is stand on what you know. Stand in love. Let your heart show. There's times when you just want to beat the heck out of it. But the Lord says, don't. You'll only be hurting yourself. Just stay put, stand firm, and know that I am your ever-present help in your time of trouble. I am looking at this situation. I am waiting for a couple of things to happen. And as they unfold, you will see a new existence emerge. You will come out of the cocoon like a butterfly brand new. I see a butterfly with many different facets and colors, not a normal butterfly. But the Lord says, this will be you because you will be able to minister to a various sort of characters in your future. You've already started. The Lord says, the hardest ministry you'll ever do is the one you're in right now. So, Lord, we just thank you for that now in Jesus' name. Wash over her, Lord. Let her keep her sanity in all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, okay. Lord, we bless this man of God. And the Lord says, you have made a wise move. You've made a wise investment into your future. Just trust the path that I have you on. Don't upset the cart and don't beat the horse. The Lord says, your family is very important to you. Always look out for your help meet. Always look out for her peace of mind. Always let her speak her peace. Don't lecture and don't push. Watch, she will embrace your ministry and then you will do it together. Together, said the Lord. Together. Together. In Jesus' name. Thank you for this, man of God. The Lord says again, I say to your family, as I said to your spouse, prosperity is about to visit you. All because you have chosen to make your presence known in the help services of my house. The Lord says, as you have helped my house, I will help your house. There's some things that frustrate you in the family. But the Lord says, don't let them frustrate you. Stand firm. Stand firm. Just keep your eyes open and smile wide and just say, God will fix it all. God is using me to fix it all. And the Lord says, nobody in the family ever really trusted you. They just looked at you kind of sideways and said, eh, eventually he'll fail. But the Lord says, now, 
I will see to it that you never fail. There's not an ounce of failure in you ever again. From this moment on, you will embrace your future. And you have seen your life change dramatically in 42 days so far. Lord says there's more to come. Just get ready. The last 42 days were days of prosperity for you. Days of enlightenment. I will use you to reach the hardened. You will reach men just like yourself who never trusted in church. All because a seed was planted in you. Go and plant the seed and watch your harvest come to fruition. Just get ready and your hands of prosperity and healing will hug even the most hardened of person and lead them right to God's throne room where you live. Lord, we bless him, every part of him. There's some aches and pains that the Lord says, I will deal with right now. I will pull them out of you right now in Jesus' name. Heal him, Lord. Heal his entire being. His entire being. His spirit man is now moving around, jumping around. Lord, we just thank you for the joy of the Lord. is his strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All righty. Let's all stand. Grab somebody's hand. Let's pray for each other. Hallelujah. All righty. Did you enjoy yourself today? Yeah. Close your eyes. Father, I just thank you that right now, from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, in and out of their body, the blood of Jesus rules and reigns. Lord, there is nothing to stop these people now. Lord, they have embraced their identity this morning. They have found out that they are seated in the highest place in the universe, Lord, in you. We thank you, Lord, that every word that comes out of us, Lord, if it's not prosperous, it will filter through the very Jesus that we are seated in. And it will come out right. Lord, forgive us for the past. All those past words and things that we have put into place today that we're not quite enjoying. Lord, we ask that you would deal with our present, get rid of all of it, so we can start fresh from this day. Lord, new things, because old things have passed away. So, Lord, bless the offering that they sowed. We ask you, Lord, to just prosper every seed. Lord, let it return to them a hundredfold minimum. We are the holy of holies people. We live in the holy place. So we thank you. Every seed we sow comes back a hundred, a hundredfold. Lord, that means it's doubled over a hundred times. And Lord, prosper their journeys wherever they go, whatever they do. Lord, the windows of opportunity are people. As we look into their windows, their eyes, we will see and know their hurt. And we will be able to minister accordingly. Lord, nothing can stop us, Lord, because we love you. And because we love you, we realize that you first loved us. So right now, these hands of agreement stretching across this room, Lord, are prospering each other. We are a family of a high order. There is no dysfunction in this family, Lord. This is your house. This is your church. And on us, you will build your church. So, Lord, we love you and we thank you. No evil shall come to our houses ever. Not one hair on our head shall be harmed, Lord. We are solidified. We are protected. And we are blessed, Lord. Let some of these people see the blessing visit their life monetarily, physically, and mentally. And we believe for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. God bless you for coming. It's my pleasure to share with you.